So we're going to look at this phasor diagram where we have the horizontal axis as cosine 2 pi f c of t and the vertical axis as negative sine 2 pi f c of t since we're looking at the angle modulated signal for a high signal to noise ratio case and we're going to use the phasor representation. So we note that we have alpha ac with an angle of theta of t based on the previous slide we've shown here. Just as a recall, let's just go back. And here we have our amplitude and phase. That's our phasor, re phasor representation. We're going to do the same thing with E of nt with uh, phi of nt, the angle associated with the noise. All right. Again, this is for the high carrot to noise ratio, alpha ac and en of t. Okay, so here's our noise. It has an amplitude of en of t and a phase of phi n of t. Since this is, we're going to use, treat this as a phasor which acts like a rotating vector, we can add these two vectors by putting it from uh, tail to the head and tail to the head and get the resultant from tail to the head. So you could see here we have the same direction and the uh, same magnitude associated with this ENT where we translated from here the tail to the head of the arrow of alpha AC. Now the resultant vector is basically going from the very beginning of alpha AC, the tail, all the way to the ENT to the head. And that's our resultant vector. Now we're going to take this component's ENT and divide it into two components, one along alpha AC and one perpendicular along perpendicular to alpha AC. Again, here's our resultant, R of t. It has an angle of psi governed by this symbol here. And we note that this angle uh, here is just the difference between phi n of t, the noise, minus the angle of our uh, carrier signal. Okay? And we note that this angle will be the same as this angle here so we can know what the components along this vector and perpendicular uh, to the alpha AC direction. So this angle is the same as this angle here and that angle is equal to phi n of t minus theta of t. Using this information we can figure out the components where E n of t is like the hypotenuse and this component here is the opposite side, so we use the sine. So sine of phi n of t minus the theta multiplied by its hypotenuse, which is the amplitude of E n of t. Likewise, we can find the component along the alpha AC direction, which is E n of t multiplied by the cosine multiplied by the quantity, I mean not multiplied, but the angle of phi n of t minus theta t. Here phi of e is the error of the angle introduced by the noise. So here's our actual angle theta of t but since it's corrupted by noise we have this amount of the angle adding it to theta t and that's our psi of t of our resultant vector. So we could see that our angle of our resultant vector psi of t consists of two parts, signal angle plus the noise angle. We can approximate the resultant vector since alpha ac is a lot larger than e of an nt, then this vector r1 of t, our resultant, is essentially uh, going to be very close to alpha ac. So here's this approximation. We have e to the alpha ac multiplied by the amount here along the direction of alpha ac, which is given by e n of t cosine of phi n minus theta of t. And so that's our resultant vector. And it's going to rotate again as 2 pi f sub t, the frequency of the carrier, and the angle. So this is our amplitude and phase representation of our resultant vector.
and our angle due to phi of t at t is just this angle divided by the resultant which is our hypotenuse hypotenuse of this component okay associated with this angle phi of t so it's just opposite side which is en sine of phi minus theta of t divided by the hy divided by the I'm sorry not the hypotenuse but by the adjacent side so it's the opposite over the adjacent so here's our opposite here's our angle our air angle divided by our adjacent side which consists of alpha AC and this component along AC EN cosine of phi and minus theta of T now since alpha AC is a lot bigger than our noise we can take the denominator here and approximate it as alpha AC and this is our final result in which how message is corrupted by our theta E which is our error due to the noise source okay again we have this psi consisting of two components theta of t and phi of t and here we evaluate phi of t in terms of this expression shown here